it comes to the options about what to do with a piece of land in Ireland, well, there are many. It kind of depends on how you view that land. Some people can look at land and think it is marginal and not very good. Other people can see huge opportunity and excitement. Well, that's exactly what happened to a couple here in Wicklow when they decided to buy a piece of land 10 years ago. Susie and Mike Kahn bought just under four acres of land in Glenealy. The fields were covered in gorse and heather, but now it's a working farm called Carrig Dolra. Their approach is simple, to make the most out of everything they've got. So in the lower site where the gardens are was better soil, but up here was very, very shallow soil. So we, we put in the native woodland scheme. We've got about 1,400 trees, little rowans and Scots pine and oak, about 750 oak, and they're going to help cycle nutrients in this landscape. Um, and you can look down then towards the Cobb Barn. The Cobb Barn and the Forest Garden that's one below here. Like we have... The Forest um, Garden, what's mm. that? And the Forest Garden is like a super enhanced orchard where you've got under plantings along with your apple trees. We've also got some nut trees. We've got every kind of berry you could ever name. Then the, then the bottom layer is perennial vegetables like perpetual kales and cabbage family and artichoke and um, herbs as well, like... Susie practices permaculture, a system of agriculture that mirrors what happens in the natural world. Permaculture is a system of understanding what our resource base is like and how we can best keep that going rather than deplete resources. We've got all these words about circular economy and permaculture is and you know thinking just like a natural system. It's a circular system. Can we have inputs that are local on site or as close to local as possible? And can the produce go out as close to local and to our community? And can it give employment locally? And a lot of the rural fabric of Ireland we all know has been struggling with that. Some of the principles of permaculture are practiced in Susie's extraordinary greenhouse, where she grows an exotic range of fruit and vegetables. I think I'd quite like to try one of your kiwi if you don't mind. <laughs> I've never yeah. tried a kiwi in Ireland before. Well, here's the first then. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is phenomenal. <laughs> What's really clear when you're in here is, unlike, say, monoculture, where things are very ordered and very neat, here it's, it's not in any way chaotic, but it's a very different look, isn't it? The way it, that permaculture, uh, the system grows. Well, the system is mimicking nature. So we've continual cover, essentially, of different plants that all come in season at different stages. So in this bed behind me, we'd have um, asparagus in early, early spring when nothing else is in leaf. And then we'd have an apricot coming into flower and a nectarine coming into flower. We've got an olive that's still in leaf there. This is the South American root vegetable yacon that's flowering now and we're going to lift the tubers. And then I can grow things up those structures the same way they would in nature climbing things like beans you know I end up having beans and pumpkins climbing on the structure of where we've harvested the apricots. As part of the Caragdora project Susie welcomes people who want to learn about permaculture and find out how they can apply the principles to their own situation be that in a small garden or on a sizeable farm and permaculture extends way beyond the art of growing. I was unemployed for quite a while and I was offered the opportunity to come here and I'm very glad I did. Why? Oh, it's, it's such a beautiful space to be in um, and, it's, and it's done a lot to help me really. I've met a lot of beautiful people. And I get the sense here it's not just about the, the growing and the farming but it's very much about the people. It is. Permaculture is about people. It's about networking with people. It's about looking to each other's different skills and trying to incorporate them into something whole um, and looking after each other basically. Its main aim was not to be um, a money-making enterprise, but rather a social enterprise. Any money that we could generate from the system would be returned to it and have a social good. So Mike and I continued to have off-farm incomes and have still got some off-farm incomes, but the social enterprise has been able to grow and support itself. Um, and what that means is that the system supports itself and supports a lot of other people who want to come and learn. One of the people who came here to Wicklow to learn about permaculture is John Duffy. John owns a 117-acre farm in Donegal. 
Permaculture is something he believes offers a vibrant alternative approach for younger farmers who want to work the land in counties like his own. What can farmers themselves, conventional farmers, intensive farmers, learn from, from what you're doing? You know, permaculture is not a toolkit as such. Um, I mean, although you, through the course of learning, you do learn some practical skills, but ultimately it is a philosophy. When we think about how we can capitalise upon the outputs from one process on our farm uh, to feed into another process, it, it ultimately leads us towards development of smaller, diverse farms which serve their local community. There's no getting around the fact that, that extensive monoculture doesn't work in our marginal landscapes. So if we can prove that these models, these more creative, diverse, small farm models are viable in these marginal landscapes, I'm really hoping that that can be the trigger to, uh, to keep people in those areas.